Let's let him tell the Lord how much we love him. Come on. worship the king of kings the lord of lords that is the only reason why god has spared our lives ah there are so many deaths that are happening around us that the lord preserve us just to worship him just to love him just to reverence him. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Abba Father. If you know, the Lord has preserved you for a purpose. The purpose is to love him more and more, to worship him more and more, more and more, more and more. I want your voice to be heard in this house. And to everyone who is under the influence of my voice, I want you in your bedroom, in your living room, to acknowledge the life God has given to you. That the life he has given to you is not for you to play around with. We cannot take this life for granted that God has given to us. It's for a purpose. It's for a purpose. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name, we have worship. In Jesus' name, we have worship. The Lord is mighty in the house this morning. Oh, thank you, Abba Father. I just want you to continue to wave your hands. 
I say, thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Abba Father. You are mighty in this house today. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are wonderful. You are glorious in this house today. May your name be praised forever and ever. You brought me here, Lord. Mandelebo shekelebo shalabakanda. To do a new thing in my life. To do a new thing in my life. Thank you, Abba Father. Let's just briefly sing this song. Yesterday is gone. Today I meet me. Holy Ghost fire. Pray. essential in our lives. Our today will lead into our tomorrow of that which you are about to do in our lives. And so we will not joke with today. The foundation and platform of today is carrying tomorrow on it. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Abba Father. You do something new in the midst of your people. Do it, O oh Lord. Our eyes are on you. Even as the eyes of the servant is upon the master. Do it, O oh God. In Jesus' matchless name. In Jesus' victorious name. Amen. In Jesus' conquering name. Amen. Let's celebrate life in the house this morning. Is that the best way to celebrate life? <laughs> Is that the best way to celebrate life? Celebrate your, your life. Celebrate yourself. Celebrate yourself. If you cannot celebrate yourself, nobody will celebrate you. you in the name of the Lord. Of all the numerous things that God is doing in our lives, God has given us cause to celebrate him. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name, we have praise. We have worship. Clap offering unto the Lord.
I didn't say unto me, I say unto the Lord. Unto your father, your maker. word for the now that which has prepared through his servant to give to us just pray for yourself that God will grant you a spirit of understanding open your mouth and just pray briefly God grant me a spirit of understanding that every word of God that is pure that comes to me today grant me the spirit of understanding in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's with a warm clap offering. Welcome, God's servant. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you once more for giving us this great privilege to be before your throne of grace and to speak the words of life to us, to enlighten our eyes so that we can serve you faithfully. I ask the Lord that you speak to somebody today, heal somebody today and promote and take your people to higher level. In Jesus' mighty name, you may be seated. This morning, we are looking into the next year. Very important, if you want, of God, if you want to have the glory of God, the protection of God, if you want God to be in you and around you, and if you want God to be everything that is good. We are looking into the message. This is an aspect that has been missing in our lives. And I believe that we will make correction. We're looking into the message which is titled Doctrine of Stoop to Prevail. doctrine or stoop to prevail. In the world, they will say stoop to conquer. The conquer may not be fitting in certain aspects. Yes, you stoop to conquer enemy, to conquer situations. But there is somebody that you have to stoop to and you can't conquer him. And that is God. So you stoop to prevail. In order for the key word to fit in, that's why I will say stoop to prevail. Let's look at the book of um, Genesis, chapter 32, verse 25. And when he saw, this is 
when Jacob was wrestling with the man that God sent, which was an, a powerful angel. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him. When the angel saw that he prevailed not, he didn't bring this man refused to be brought to the knowledge, the true knowledge of submission to God, of yielding to God when he saw that this worshiper in the youth, in his youth, when he become old, whatever level of age, God finds that there are people that make things difficult for him to prevail. And he said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. That's God trying to persuade man. I want to bless you. This is the way things should be and things should go for me to bless you. And God will not give up on man. God is long-suffering, is patient, long-suffering, merciful, but not all through. He has a time limit. And a time limit given when he saw that he prevailed not against you and I in whatever activity that we are doing to provoke God not to allow the blessings to come, God said, my labor will not be in vain and will not be wasted. So by his power, he did something. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, do the thing that can make me to submit and surrender for your life and blessing to be inherited by me. Anything I am doing or that is being done against me to stop the blessings, oh God, take it away today. And if you believe this statement of submission and confession, you believe, stand to your feet and raise your two hands to God and say, I surrender today. And God is asking, is it from your lips or from your heart? And God is saying, if, is, it, is it a deceit or truth? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I raise up my hands. I surrender today. The things of pride or struggle that is making me not to allow your blessings to come into my life, take it away. Today, through the message, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. I will go into wrestle later. Say wrestle. All right. The reason of wrestle is because somebody wants to wrest blessing power, something good from somebody. Nobody goes into wrestle if there is no blessings and power and favor to rest. Rest means to get something forcefully on or in a very peculiar intelligent manner to get something from somebody. And you cannot get it except you engage in wrestle. 
Are you following? Good. Now the next verse. And he said, let me go for the day break it. And he said, I will not let you go except, what is it? Except what? So what was the purpose of the wrestling? For a blessing. But his attitude negates the blessing. Now we're we'll, we'll going to we'll comment that. And now the next verse. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast what? Prevailed. Somebody will prevail today. Somebody is going to prevail today. Amen. Now take note, this was taught some last, last year, that the purpose of touching the hollow of his garment so that he can no longer stand properly. When the joint is dislocated, the man will not be able to stand. He touched the hollow of his tie. And the next thing for him, he couldn't stand. He has to go down. He has to bow. Say bow down. Say stoop down. So he has to stoop down. He has to bow down. He has to kneel. Say kneel. And this is one key point and power. If you and I are going to get blessings from God, we must bow down before him. We must kneel before him. We must stoop before him. And it goes not only to God. If you want to learn anything from a master, say master, something you don't have, you don't know, until you bow down, you stoop down, you kneel down, in your attitude of obedience and submission and, hum and humility, that thing in the hand of the master can never get to you. If you, if you do a master and a servant is standing, and the master is raising shoulder, and the, the, the servant is raising shoulder, that is equal with the master. The blessings in the master will not get to him. He may praise him with his mouth. Are you following? It will never get to him. This is an attitude, a character that God wants his people to have. Are you following? Are you following? And to bow down, to kneel down, if they tell you what it entails, it goes with submission. It goes with service. It goes with how to humble yourself and do something to curry favor from your master. Those of us that come to church and we don't know how to bow down, how to stoop in service and render service that you please God. Uh, we have tried it now. We tried it for so long and the rest of them, no blessings will come out. And we may use our mouth to say, I have been worshiping God. I have been serving God. But how was the worship? How was the service? Jesus described service that some services and some worship are in vain, that the Father is looking for those who will worship him, what? In spirit and in truth. He weighs our services. We may shake hands with the master. Nothing will happen. If the handshake 
is not the handshake of humility to please the master through which the blessing can come. Ordinary shaking of hands, ordinary praising him will not collect the blessing. Now, Jacob knelt down. He could not stand to wrestle again. Hello? Hello? He knelt down. He bowed down, but his hands were not dislocated. He held the angel and gripped him when he was kneeling down and said, you have dislocated my system. You have made me weak. Now my legs are weak. I cannot stand to wrestle. But with the remaining part of my strength, like a dying man, a drowning man, when a man is about to be drowned in the sea, anything he holds and grips with his hands, that thing cannot go away from him. I now grip you. You can't go away. I am on my knees. I am stooping before you. But I will show you that there is power in kneeling down. There is power in stooping down. There is power in bowing down. I am one of the sons of God. My father, where you came from, my father Abraham, his spirit is there with you. I be not be so, he said yes. Uh, Isaac, my immediate one, is there with you. Not be so, he said yes. And I will go to the bosom of my father. But this, God promised and covenanted that he will give blessings to Abraham and his seed. And I am his seed. Therefore, you cannot go without blessing me. I know you came with my blessing. Give it to me. I won't allow you to go to heaven with you. Now, there are some people, when the man of God comes to the scene on the altar to minister, there are blessings in his hands. And some people are not able to collect blessings. Those who are able to collect blessings who know how and what to do to collect blessings, they collected the blessings. But the blessings of some people could not be collected. The man of God has to go back. And when he goes back with your blessing, God will be surprised and said, what? He didn't collect the blessing? He said, no. Okay, what next to do? What next message to preach? What next action? I don't know what you are following. Are you following? Because I want him to collect the blessing. And when that happens, often, and the person is not ready to collect, God comes angry. He said, he that is often reproved and hardened his neck, this is not blessing now, it's not judgment, shall suddenly be destroyed and that without what? Remedy. Who is looking for that in the congregation? Who is looking for that? If you are one of the persons looking for that, just stand to your feet and jump up and say, <laughs> that's what. Anybody looking for that? What are you looking for? All right. So we must return to God. Say, I will return to God. Amen. Amen. All right. Now. His name was changed. The blessing was given. He prevailed because he traveled. He rests power. He rests blessings from God because he wrestled. To cause Jacob to stoop, to bend down, to kneel down before his maker, He collected a blessing. Uh, in Genesis chapter uh, 49, if you read the account of, uh, of uh, uh, Judah, Judah was described as a lion. As what? 
a lion. He was described as a lion, and as a lion, as powerful as a lion is, he will have to stoop. He will have to kneel down before he catches the prey. Before he gets what, he, what he's looking for, a lion will stoop down. A lion will curse. A lion will be on his knees asking God, you gave me this power. And this power, I have to use it to your approval. Now, oh God, what are you sending on my way today? Hallelujah. Let's see other, other things that, that uh, stoop down to get blessing. The eagle, the eagle, as great as the eagle is, it stoops down to conquer, to prevail. You will see that the eagle, the high eagle that has its nest on high, uh, the blessings he's looking for, they are positioned on the earth. And the ego, the high ego, will maneuver and with a powerful swoop, pshum, quick, in a swift manner, come down. In other words, he is, is kneeling, is humbling himself, he's stooping. He cannot stay in the high mountain and say, You you pray, you have been given to me. Oh, come, come up here, they won't come. The only method, the only key that will make him to get it is ego. You stoop down. See, we see every ego before they have their food, before they get their prey from on high, they will stoop down. Hello? In a swift manner and get their prey. Now, uh, look, okay, they've given us the scripture of Genesis re regarding the lion. Judah is a lion's way from the prey, my son. Thou art gone up, he stooped what? Down. He cautioned. As an old lion, he cautioned as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The eagle also stoops down, as I've just told you. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. And Job chapter 9, verse 26. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the east of the earth, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. Swift. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Now let's look at Job chapter 9, verse 26. They are passed away as the swift sheep, as the eagle that hasted to the prey. The eagle on high, making haste in a swift manner, dives, stoops down. <laughs> Catches it. Now, listen to this. Are you aware? Are you aware that in all this terrific speed, swift, and uh, and move, that uh, you must position yourself well. Say, I will position myself well. When the prey, when the blessing is positioned. You need to gather, to gather all your wisdom to make sure you are swift. Swift. Because 
When the eagle delays in his swift movement, the prey, when the prey sighs the eagle, it will go out of vantage position. <laughs> I don't know whether you are following. Are you following? The eagle targets a prey and he has released the speed within, within this kind of seconds, he will be there. And he has pointed, targeted the very position. And as it's coming, if you waste any time, the prey will shift out of that position. What will happen? It will catch nothing. What, what happens? It will catch nothing. The Lord told me that so are our blessings. Any time we are before the Lord and the Lord is instructing us to do something, he has timed that blessing that if we respond immediately, we as ego will reach the blessing. But when we delay, the blessing has been moved out of what? Position. Remember, who brought the blessing to Jacob was an angel. Are you following? And he didn't say he would stay for 10 days and 10 nights. Are you following? He said, I'm positioned just for only one night. Now, you see, you fail to do what you fail to do. Now, you leave me. I want to go because I am timed. I walk by time. Hello? Now. Those who move very swiftly, you act promptly. Say, I will act promptly. If I say to you as a, a messenger of God, uh, anybody who has uh, 10,000, I want you to stand up, come and give it. You will see the reaction of delay. Some will get up immediately. Some will delay by pondering, do I have to give it or not? Are you following now? This period of debating and delaying and doing it at your own time. Remember who, blessed, who brought the blessing is an angel. And who sent him, you sent him for a purpose. That's not the only job that he will do. There are other jobs for him. When God sends a message, there is somebody who has uh, uh, sinned. And uh, there is grace and mercy and power to forgive him and to heal him now. Let that person stand on his feet. And let that person come forward. And we know that we are one of the persons. And then we start struggling in our mind. I don't know. Are you following? We are foot dragging. The period of mercy and grace has passed. And that is why when the period passed, if we still do that thing, it's not active. It's belated. Uh, when there is an examination for people to, to write, invigilators will tell you, as so, so time, as so time is the period of the exam. Is that correct? And they will set the time of each paper. When you don't mind about the time, and you think you can write a, a, an exam that was meant for one hour, and you think that in, the, in your own way you can write it in three hours, then you will have only answered one or two questions because you time yourself for three hours. Why the invigilator examiner time you for one hour? So you will meet up with the speed. Am I speaking to somebody here? This? When you enter into generation, the last generation, is a faster generation. Faster generation. The children are very fast. I don't know whether you are following the children are very fast. The children you and I have given birth to, they think in some level, they think faster than us. I don't know what you are following. But if you want to be a good father, you will still be ahead. 
before they ever th uh, think what they are thinking, you have thought it ahead if you prepare yourself. I don't know what they are following. All right. So that is the only way you can overcome them and catch up. But if you refuse to, over, to update yourself before God and be fast thinking, you will see that children can play on your intelligence. <laughs> Hello? 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 So in the last generation... We must be fast thinkers. Fast what? Thinkers. Amen. 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 Good. Now, Joseph, say Joseph. The great dreamer stood to conquer. He stooped to prevail. Now Joseph, who had a dream of God, he stooped down. He was sold into slavery. In slavery, a man has lost his rights and privileges. So he was sold as a slave to serve others. But if, you, if he knows how to serve others, even in slavery, oh, the masters of slaves shall have mercy upon him. Are you following? Potiphar bought him as a slave. And when he bought him as a slave, he must have bought many others as slaves. But this one had quality service. Say, my service must be quality service. If they ask him to clean, he clean it well. If they ask him to wash plate, he wash the plate without breaking the broken, breakable place and the rest of them. You know, sometimes when people serve, before you know it, until they destroy all the things in the house. They are full of causing accident. Accident. Hello? Hello? If you ask them to go and earn anything or do anything, they don't know how to do it so they can destroy things. Destructive service. May you and I not be destroyers in Jesus' name. Yeah. Just Joseph was sold into slave. But he distinguished himself, a self potiphar in every area. Uh -uh. This man is so intelligent, he's so good. By the way, by his goodness, this man ought to have, uh, uh, his destiny ought to have been shining out. He ought not to be sold at, as a slave. We have uh, found out that everything he does, God is with him. Hello? Hello? God is with what? With him. He knows how to polish shoes. Do we know how to polish shoes? Hello? He knows how to wash, oh, to wash over the house. The things that are dirty, that are dusty, he cleans them up. He wants everything to be decent. He is the one who knows how to keep and to dress the house. Blessed are the people who have children that are meticulous, that know how to keep and to dress the house. When you see a child that is not mindful, it does, it does not care how the clothes of father and mother are, whether they are dirty, it's not dirty. If you refuse to be a good child, you have refused to be a good father. Where does uh, a father start from? What kind of, where did he start from? From childhood. A, a child that refuses to be a good child 
shall eventually graduate with many degrees. <laughs> First degree, second degree, and what? The third degree, and then with research. What do we have in Nigeria now? People that refuse to serve. And we see the negative degrees that they have gotten. It's a problem to this nation. Is it not a problem? It's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. You can't get anybody for service right now. The service that people are looking for is money. What is it? Money. What is it? Money. What is it? Money. Is it? money. You are pursuing money. Pursuing money. But do they know what real cool money, how to get cool money? They that make it haste to be rich shall not be empty, shall not be innocent. Hello? Hello? To get quick money, the devil will tell them how to make quick money. They will need the blood of people. They will need so many things. And today, if you get to Nigeria, the greatest and biggest cars are driven by youths. Am I showing you another Nigeria? Am I showing another Nigeria? The greatest, the exotic cars, they are driven by what? Youth. Children in the, in the university you send there, from there, from university, they are pulling out cars. Now study then, they, will. they are putting out, pulling out what? Cars. Because there is a living human attraction. The Lord told me recently, one of the reasons why you see this youth crazy, he said there are ladies there that dress themselves in different levels. And if you want them, you must pay heavily for it. I don't know what you are following. Is that we are talking about the youth? One of the engineers that engineering them are ladies. What is it? Ladies. They are the one engineering them. When they see these, see these ladies, oh boy, this must be their lady. And their lady, the lady will say, how much? Do you have Cody? Do you have Cody? Are you sound? Are you following? And they are polishing the legs. I don't know what you are following. They are polish every polish. Yeah, everywhere that is polishable. They are polishing the polishables. And when they come, they shine as sun and moon. Are you following? Good. Men are dying for them. Negative men. They are dying for them. And to die for them, go and see them. They enter the highest places. And they do, they do all the shopping that they can do. May God deliver you and I in Jesus' name. Amen. Joseph was sold to Egypt. He stooped down. And then, from there, he stooped down. He cursed. He went into prison. To where? Prison. He stooped down into prison. He bowed down in prison. And for prison, because of who he is, he was made head of the prisoners. Hello? He never forgot his profession, his gift. He was still helping people there. And he was still interpreting dreams of people. The dream interpretation was not how to be rich. It's how to help people and solve their problems. May you have the capacity to solve the problem of others in Jesus' name. And then he stooped down there. This is a man that, with a dream that bowed down. 
He bowed down to many people. He knelt down to many people. He uh, stooped down. And yet, when he fulfilled the quota of service, kings and people shall kneel down before him. Before you are commanding people to kneel down before you, how many people and how long have you knelt down for others? Issachar. Issachar was another person that stooped down to conquer. Say, O oh God, give me the grace, the spirit, the heart of Issachar. We are told in Genesis 49, verse 8 and 9. Genesis 49, Genesis 49, 8 and 9. Okay, okay, that's Judah. Get us Issachar. Get us Issachar there. Have you gotten Issachar? Okay, Issachar. Issachar knelt down between two burdens. One burden on the right, one burden on the left. And uh, people abandoned them. People will not want to carry them. The two burdens are, number one, the burden of heaven. Say the burden of heaven. Number two, the burden of the earth. Say the burden of, of the earth. In other words, the burden of God and the burden of man. God has a burden. Who am I going to send? Who will be the middle man? Who will stand in the gap for me and for men? Isaac has said, here am I. He said, look, Genesis 49, 14. Issachar is a strong, is a strong ass. Caution down between two burdens. Ready for service. Prepare for service. He has trained his muscles. And he has trained his heart and attitude. I'm ready to serve. Come People say, anybody say, I'm ready to serve? I'm ready to serve. Because I know that in service, there is a reward. In service, there is what? A reward. Therefore, a cush between the two, this thing. God, I am here. I am on my knees. Can you permit me to carry this load for you? Oh, man. Also, I know that there are some things that you want somebody to do for you. Can I help you carry this load? That's the work of an ass. And we are told that he saw the wisdom be, uh, behind carrying loads, burdens, and serving. He saw, because he saw, he saw, for the joy that this load of God, this burden of God, if I carry it well to please God, God will reward me. I don't know whether you are following. This load of men, of my family, where I came from, if I carry it well, my father, my mother, the family will reward me. Is somebody listening? Therefore, uh, is it wisdom? To neglect the, the burden and walk away. I come and carry say, me, na me, na me go, na me go. So he bent down. He saw that if he does that service faithfully, ahead of that service, there is a reward that he will have rest. Rest. He saw that rest is good. The rest of reward the rest of payment, the rest of well done, good and faithful servant, enter into what? Thy rest. Oh, yeah, my So he did not mind. He began to carry. And now as he was carrying, now you don't carry burdens 
Nobody employs anybody to do something without paying. As he's carrying, there is payment. Are you following? So he was a servant unto what? Tribute. Say a servant unto tribute. He was a servant unto tribute. Uh, take note, all the things that he was carrying, the God was telling them, for this load, for this load, this is what and what you have to do to be able to carry it. Jesus said in the, in the scriptures, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Learn of me. I will teach you the way to carry them, and your burden will be light. Are you following? Hello? So with all the service of instruction that is coming from the master, is learning, is acquiring knowledge and skill. Are you following? With men, is acquiring knowledge and word skill. Therefore, those who didn't undergo the service that the, those knowledge and skill, uh, knowledge or skill involve, if you don't do it, you cannot know how to do it. So after he has learned all, when people want to do one or two things, they will say, ah, they can't do it too. Uh, they pay the the person, he is a servant unto what? Tribute. Okay, I will do it for you, but how much are you going to give to me? In the modern day, a house, a house owner, can you stand up by yourself? You want to build a house, say, I'm going to build the house by myself. Any one of you that is so strong and so powerful that only you, you build a house. Stand to your feet so that we can clap for you this morning. Anybody? There are different stages involved, different professionals that are involved that you must contact and pay money for, money to. I don't, is that correct? So he is a servant unto what? Tribute. He became richer than masters. Is equal. How is a white man who has this knowledge? How is he getting our money? Is it not the services that he manufactured this? He manufactured it. We couldn't manufacture. If you know how to do it, will you go and buy it? How are they creeping our money? It is the thing, the technology that they know that they use in producing these things. So it's making money for them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Issachar, a servant unto tribute, because he cushed down, he stooped down. Now, God, the good God, said the good God, teaches us to stoop. That's one wonderful thing with our Father, our God. God teaches us to stoop, to stoop down. It teaches us, look, 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 I want to teach you, I want to enrich you. Let me show you the ways. Say the ways. The ways of becoming great and rich to receive blessings. So he teaches us. He teaches us. He said, he teaches us, he makes us to lie down in green pastures. We saw it in Psalm 23. If we were left alone, we wouldn't even know how to lie down. It's how to jump up. It's how to walk. God said, no. Look, look, look. Come down. The first thing, bend down. Lying down. Because I want to take you into realms of revealing things to you. Lie down in what? Green pastures. Psalm 23. From verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to do what? Lie down in green what? Pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Make it me to lie down. By lying down, you are not walking. 
Now, when he begins to lead you, you need to walk. From lying down to walking, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored what? My soul is now leading or taking you. You see this green patch? I say, lie down here. Lie down here. Now you begin to breed them and know them. You know the variety of the, of the green patch? I say, yes, these are lie down. Be with me. Let me show you revelation. Let me give you a scan of all your blessings and where they were taken to. You see this one green pasture? You see this green pasture? You see this one? You see this one? See this one? Yes. They are yours. But they have been stolen by the devil. They have been taken away. So you come to me. Accept me as your Lord and what? And your Savior. You lie down. So when we give our life to Christ, the first thing that we will do as faithful people is to dwell in him. Is to abide in him, to acquire knowledge. Are you following? By showing all the green passions that he has given to us in our destiny. Then he said, get up. You saw them now, I said, you know them now, I said, yes. Follow me now. He leadeth me. He now begin to lead us. Beside the still, what? Waters. 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 You see? Beside the still waters. There are some, they have positive and negative still waters. There are some of these blessings that is still there. No matter your struggle, they cannot move. I don't know what you are following. Because... They are registered and established in solid steel water. Nothing can move me. I, God alone, can move them. What you could not do, I would do it for you. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside what? The steel waters. You have been calling for good. It has not been, it has not been answering. All right? Uh, he restored what? My soul. He goes there. Do you see them now? Now, I, God, I'm the restorer, I'm the deliverer, I'm the redeemer, I'm the savior. It take them, since you make me your shepherd, since you are following me, take it and he will use it to adorn you. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You see all these blessings? Yes. You must walk uprightly. You must not commit sin. Are you following? You must be holy. You must have the fear of God so that the enemy will not steal them from you, will not take them from you. Now, he said, he restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of what? Righteousness for his name's sake. Yes. Yea, though I walk through, now after God has clothed you and filled you, and seeing you that you are truly his image and likeness, and see that he has uh, equipped you, he said, okay, I want to see now. You go. You go. I'm watching you. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say come to heaven immediately. In this earth, there is a valley of shadow of death. In this earth, there is God and there is Satan. There are all sorts of trials and temptation. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear what? Because when you dwell enough, abide enough in the presence of God, and he equips you and loads you with power and gives you his armor, there is no devil you are going to be afraid of. He said, people are dying, no. People are dying, no. You are not among those that die. Amen. He said, business is collapsing, no. Business is collapsing, no. Business is falling down, no. Your business is not one of them. Amen. Because you know how to keep your business in a righteous manner. Are you following? Yes, All right. Now, <laughs> yet though, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they do what? Comfort me. He's a wicked father. 
and wicked mother who keep the rod from a child that is behaving anyhow. Spare the rod and spoil the child. Spare the rod. The rod is not only sticko. Your mouth is a rod. I don't know what you're what you following. The rod of correction. Use your mouth. Don't say, I am tired. If you are tired, who takes over? The devil. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, I will never be tired. Because I can't surrender. My wife, my husband, my children to the devil. He said, I've been warning you, you must change, you must change, you must change. Why is not change? You have not changed the negative changer. Deal with the negative changer. I don't know whether you are following. Deal with it. He said, he, he continued, a husband, if they carry girls, if they carry women, if they carry this. You have not dealt with the spirit that makes him to be carrying women. Go on your knees, stoop down, and call before your God. Say, God, bring back my husband to me. I don't know whether you're following. Yes, and you really say a good prayer. There will be kata kata between, the, between him and his lovers. I don't know whether you're following. Yes, Are you following? Yes, they will call him useless man. Nonsense man. That's a name that the wife doesn't call, call him at home. I don't know what they are following. <laughs> they will call you all this name. So when, when you go on your knees to deal with the negative changer, God will clothe the sinner, the sinning husband, the sinning wife with shame. And if he's tired of shame, he will come back to home where he will be clothed. I don't know what they are following. Am I speaking to some people today? Am I speaking to some people today? So, we must not be tired. We must call upon him day and what? Night. That's why God told us, he good teacher, say, don't think that it's a thing of uh, one day labor. You must be patient. You must be what? Patient. You must have what? Long suffering. You are going to suffer for long. Is it forever? No. Oh, yeah. Am I speaking to some people today? Or I'm just acting drama. <laughs> Is it forever? No. They that believe it unto the end shall be saved. Are you following? They join when the erring person partner begin to do all sorts of things and later come back and see that there was a wife or a husband or a son or a daughter that was doing prayer and through the person God deliver him, he will ever be grateful. Hello? Hello? He said, yea, though, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with what? With me. With what? With me. Is God with you? Yes, eh? yes, Is he with you? Yes, Is he with you? Some people are looking away and maybe they are sleeping. Is God with you? Yes, sir. Is God with you? Yes, sir. Is God with you? Yes, sir. <laughs> For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they do what? Comfort me. Rod and staff. The rod For of government. The staff, we use it and draw you back. You are going the wrong way. Come back this way. Blessed is the home, the family that have father and mother established in the Lord. For they shall train up their children in the fear of the Lord. And when they grow up, they will not do what? They part from it. They will be overcomers. All right? The next verse. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of what? My enemies. Nigeria enemies, enemies in Nigeria. Are they few now or many? Are they few or many? 
Is there any table? Is there any table still for somebody in Nigeria now? Huh? Even though the enemies are many, they are what? Many. Yet God prepares a table before you in the presence of what? Of your enemies. He prepares a table. And, and God said, all right, who sent you? Who sent his enemies? Say the devil. Okay, the devil has anointed them. Come and receive a good, a better anointing. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with, with what? Oh, the oil of God that makes kings, that delivers, that saves. Come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your head is different from their head. He said, Thou anointest my head with oil. As I'm talking to you now, there is oil of God spiritual flowing inside me. I don't know whether you are following. Are you following? That is why from day to day, the oil quickens me, greases my mind. Are you following? There is nothing, there is nothing God cannot put inside my mind, something good. Because he oils my mind from day to day, from nine to what? Night. Yes, that anointed my head. And when he anoints your head, it's to make you a slave. What does he make you? A king to have dominion. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. In the name of Jesus. He said, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup do, does what? Uh -uh, running over. This man they gathered and surrendered that they wanted to kill. They thought he's dead. But now blessings are coming. They are even coming towards the enemies and overflowing towards the enemies. And the enemies will now grieve. If a man's way pleases the Lord, he will make his enemies to do what? Be at peace with him. And those immediate enemy, they either bow down. Otherwise, in Psalm, uh, Psalm, in Psalm uh, read the book of Psalm. I think Psalm chapter 2. That you must, if you refuse to bow down, he will be angry. And he will use a rod. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Good. So God teaches us to stoop. He maketh us to lie down in green pastures. He maketh, he makes us fishers of men. You will never lack good men in Jesus' name. Because he will make you fishers of what? Of men. God is our father. Is God is our good father. Say, God is my good father. God is my good master. Because he teaches and makes us to have good life and the good things of life and living. You see, this morning was speaking to, speaking to me when I was preparing this message. Why did they call good master. A good master will want to hand over the good things of life to you. Not only hand them over, he will teach you how to handle them. He will teach you how to manage them. That's what God did to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He is a good master. And he gave them every good thing. And he taught them. You see all these good things? They are for your enjoyment. They are for your life. But let me teach you, don't touch this and don't touch that. He's a good master. A good master, a good God will never open his eyes for you to walk into death without giving you commandments. Hello? So he will give you the commandment of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Genesis 18, 17 to 19, God expects every good leader to ex exhibit this attribute. I know him, that is Abraham, that he will command his children. He will command his children. Genesis 18, verse 17 to 19. 
And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Blessed is the man that God is seeing your greatness. Blessing are the undefiled in the way. When we walk in the ways of the Lord and steadfast in the way of the Lord, we are making sure that our future is sure. Say in the name of Jesus. I will make sure in the Lord that my future is sure. Seeing that Abraham shall surely be a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in what? Do you know how many people you can impart with good things, with the blessings of God? For I know him. That is a very strong testimony of God. For I know him. How does God know you? What does he know you for? How does he know you? Now see how God knows Abraham. For I know him. Before you know somebody, you must know the in and out of character or behavior of the person. Hello? Hello? And God knew him and he saw that his behavior in and out for all this period he had been watching him. Abraham has not changed from his ways. So God can call him to be a trustee. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after what? After him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice. Say to do justice. And judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, let's look at Ecclesiastes 6, verse 10. I want about, oh, I'm about to round up now. Ecclesiastes 6, verse 10. That which had been is named. Eh? Eh, that which had been. There is something that had been before. There is something that pre-existed before. That which pre-existed. That which had been is named already. Okay, what pre-existed? How did this world, how was it created? Who created it? Somebody created it. And he said, that which had been, that which pre-existed, is named already. Okay, what is the name of the power of the author of the universe? Who created this? He said, that which had been is named already. <laughs> I want to know the name. So what is the name? And it is known that it is man. Eh? 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 This is, a, this is a mystery. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than him. Hey. That which pre-existed, who created the world, his name is called what? <laughs> his name is called what? Man. What did that place say? His name is called what? Man. Uh -uh. Man. His name is called man. Now, man. The man they are talking there is God. God is a man. God is a divine man. 
And that God created man. He wants to give birth to his image and his likeness. And so God, the divine man, said, let us make man in our what? Image. And afterward, our likeness. And yes, let them have dominion over the earth, over the sea, and over the air, and over every creeping thing. I'm giving them dominion because they came from me. They are my sons. They are my heirs. So they have, yes, they stand in the position to inherit what I created. So God made man in his own image and after his likeness. So now, how many men are here? I'm not talking about plural in the sense of plural. Now, God has made, God is a man. Is that not so? And he has made a man. So how many men or men are here? How many men are here or men? I didn't say, okay, no, my question I ask. I didn't say raise up your hand. The question is, how many men or men are here? Eh? Eh? How many, how many men are here? Eh? Eh? There are two. If you are a man, raise up your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Who made you a man? No, don't use the name God because we are into, in this scripture. Who made you man? Man. So the superior man and the inferior man. Is that not so? All right. So how many men or men are here? Okay. <laughs> now, God said, you carry his image. Now that you carry his image, you can walk with God. Walk with God. Say, I will walk with God. If you want to prosper, you must honor the man, God, the divine man, who created you and gave birth to you. And the part, that part of scripture is saying, now that God has bestowed greatness to you, power to you, be careful. He said, neither may he the lesser man, contend with him that is mightier than he. God said, be careful. I give birth to you, say the Lord. Be careful, even though I bequeath to you my power and my attitude, my, all my uh, blessings and the rest of them. Be careful. Submit yourself to me. Don't equate yourself to, with him. Are you following? Are you following? Are you following? Now, let me tell you this now. Do you know everything that is in the day and in the night? Okay. Do you know everything that is in the air? Okay. Do you know everything about the earth? But who knows everything? Who knows everything? God. Who is God? The divine man. Say the divine man. Now, is he with you or not with you? So if, we, if he's with you, that's why he said, in all thy ways, commit thy way unto the Lord. Before you do anything, meet him. Say, God, I teach me this is what and what I want to do. Help me to do it. So we come before him. Now, what is the respect that the lesser give to the greater? From this teaching, submission, to bow, to kneel down. Are you following? Are you following? This morning after God gave me this message, one of the things I did, I said that, oh, uh, though I know it, I respect God in my heart, but I need to, how many people are in the altar? How many people are in the altar? Two. Two. God, the divine man, 
and the human being, man, that is in the altar. Is that not so? So if I come to the altar and uh, this is the altar. I come to the altar and God is seated in the altar. Who is leading who? Who is leading who? God is leading the human. Is that not so? So what do I supposed to do when I come to the altar? Eh? Eh? I am sub if, if I'm submitting to him. My father, my God, my creator, I kneel down before you. I bow down before you. I came so that you will help me. The people you sent me to, they are here. Oh, Lord, help me to speak to the people and bless the people. Are you following? God rejoices and honors him. Now, if I don't kneel down and stand like him and he himself is that sitting or standing along with me, there is no respect. I'm not showing that there is somebody greater than me. I don't know what you are following. I don't know what you are following. Let this be a practice that we must practice every time because in kneeling down, you prevail. Not only you prevail, you conquer. Not only you conquer, you attain your grants. Things will be granted you. I don't know what you are following. You saw when Jacob knelt down. His petitions were granted. And if we want our petitions to be granted, stand up and ask God to grant the petition. Now we want our petition to be granted now. Stand to your feet and ask God so that your petition should be granted. Stand to your feet and ask God. Yes. Good. For those who understood the message, you can never stand to your feet before God and your petitions to be granted. You have to go on your knees. Go on your knees. Go on your knees. Kneel down. Bow down before God for your petitions to be granted. This is why Peter will say in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians, are you kneeling before God now? Are we kneeling before God? We are bowing down before him. Now stand to your feet. Let's read this, chapter, this verse before I round off. Which with you still standing, let's have Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is what? Named. That the purpose of the bind that he may grant you. Let's say that together. That he may grant me. The purpose of Paul needing, kneeling down now. Oh God, because I beg you, have mercy. I on my knees. Please, I have some things request that he may grant you according to the riches of his glory. Say according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with the might, with might by the, the spirit in the inner man. Yes, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted, say rooted, and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the bread and the length, and the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Yes? 
now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Yes, unto him be glory in the church by, the, by Christ Jesus throughout all what? ages, world without end. Oh, yeah, ba, ba, ba. Begin to thank God for what he has done. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him for what he has done. Oh, Father, we thank you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. It's time to worship God with our offerings, with our first fruits, for those who have not paid their first fruits, with our tithes, with our uh, building levy, with our wealth creation, and uh, with that which we give for welfare. And any other vow that you have made. May we stand to our feet to worship God in the beauty of holiness by saying to God, We are true worshipers. We came to bow to you. Out of the, out of the abundance you have given to us, O Lord, we came to submit this to you. May we lift up our tithes and all our sacrifices. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your people give, bless them. Bless them. Fill them with all your riches and blessings and expand them and get them rooted that they may know the breadth and the length, the height and the depth of Christ Jesus in his exceeding riches that exceeds all that we ever thought about and imagined in Jesus' name. Everything you do, oh Lord, oh, I show a salute. Oh Lord, I the hell, I show a salute. Oh Lord, I the hell, I show a salute. Oh Lord, I the hell, I show a salute. Oh Lord, I the hell, I show a salute. Oh Lord, I the hell, I show a salute. Everything you do, oh Lord, oh, I show a salute. Oh Lord, I the hell.
someone happened to be in the house this morning, say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a baby dedication there this morning. Hallelujah. What a clap, clap for God now. Amen. Has it been good to us? Hallelujah. Please join me to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Felix and Noah Govema. Please, sorry for the name. Please just join them with your, along with your family and friends as they come up for their baby dedication. Hallelujah. Choir, please. 